Being true to oneself isn't always as easy as it seems, but for Mark Kavuma, it's the only way to be. Hi, my name is Jay Phelps, and this is Ear to the Ground, a documentary series showing a rare glimpse into the life of an artist. And today, we're following trumpeter, composer, and record company owner, Mark Kavuma. Mark Kavuma, trumpet player, musician, band leader of the Banger Factory, um, and the man behind Banger Factory Records. What does Banger Factory Records do? What does Banger Factory Records do? Well, it says it on the tin, man. <laughs> Bangers! <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's a, it's a, a record company, or labor rather, that I started. Um, in the pandemic, uh, 2021, we released our first album. But my whole idea for the label was to kind of... Well, the Banger Factory is unique in a way that um, we have, you know, people like Musingi Brian Edwards um, playing with the Banger Factory, and then you have people like Deshanel Gordon. So you kind of, you're bringing these two worlds of the British jazz scene together, the old and young. And I feel like um, recently, that's kind of been uh, they're being pushed away you know because the young people are thriving and everyone's making a lot of noise about the young British jazz scene but you know there's the older guys who are doing it and have been doing it for a long time and you know I've been lucky enough to be around the older musicians and them supporting me for since I started really so for me Banger Factory Records was to kind of a way to unite these two worlds bring these two worlds together as I feel like the, the scene at the moment is being kind of separated. Um, and I don't think it's actually the thought, the thought of the musicians. I think it's, um, I think the musicians, they just want to play, but I think the way it's being uh, promoted, um, it's kind of a lot of emphasis on this young British jazz wave that kind of doesn't leave space for a lot of the older musicians. Um, so I wanted Bang & Factory Records to be a place where these two worlds come together and um, unite the, the scene in our own way. Yeah. Like, do I look at you? Do I look at the cause? Wow! Wow! So where are we? This is my primary school. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, Red Drift, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. You know that corner right there, right? But uh, for my first fight. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew feeling really well, um, but through Kinetic, I got close with his brother Nathaniel, um, and that kind of then led to Tomorrow's Warriors. Um, a lot of us that were going to Kinetica that kind of wanted, because Kinetica was two weeks in the summer school, but those of us that wanted to keep it going throughout the year, we went to Tomorrow's Warriors. And that used to happen at the time on a Thursday morning uh, at the Spice of Life. Um, and that's where I kind of was introduced to <laughs> the current London jazz scene. We've kind of all grown up together. I met and Moses big up Gary Crosby. Yeah, Ga well, exactly. So that's where I met Gary. Mm -hmm. And um, I met Gary, um, Moses, um, Charlie Stacy. Charlie Stacy blew my mind. I remember meeting Charlie Stacy and thinking, okay, maybe this music thing's not for me. <laughs> 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 I remember meeting Charlie. Charlie was amazing, man. Charlie. Charlie was really playing. I mean, we were, we loved jazz and we, you know, we were, like, we were all about it. But then Charlie so, was really playing like at like eight, nine, or whatever he was. So we used to bring him on stage when he was like, yeah, and, you know. And I think in Tomorrow's Warriors, um, but Tomorrow's Warriors was a lot more concentrated. You know, there's fewer people, so I guess you had more of an interaction with, especially with someone like Gary. Um, you had more time with him, one to one. You know. Yeah. It's too much. 
much. It's pretty crazy. I always want to give props to Nat Adderley. Yo, yeah. say his name. Nat, Nat Adderley. Adderley, man. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be done. So what food do you normally cook, uh, eat? What, what do I cook? Yeah. All right, so it's interesting because um, last year, I've kind of been uh, veggie. Okay. Um, I was getting ready for this. I just did this ultra map. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> 80, 80K. Wow. In the mountains. Wow. Ah. I saw this. I did see that. That was crazy. So, anyway, getting ready for that. I was kind of veggie uh, for the whole time, really. I've only just kind of started. I might, you know, I might stick to veggie, to be honest with you. Better. But during the year, anyway, I've been cooking a lot of veggie stuff. Um, a, lot of, a lot of curries. All the curries. <laughs> Chickpeas. Because that's easy, you know? Yeah. Um, but now, and then I, I, I always go to my parents for, because my mum always cooks kind of veggie food anyway, so it's a lot of food stuff. My little stock, my little pots. <laughs> Welcome to Slurry Keys! <laughs> That's how you travel, man. <laughs> Can you see it? Yeah. The whole face, yeah, everything. So tell me something else, though. Like, who are your influences in terms of the, the jazz great trumpet players? The jazz great trumpet players. Who wow. would you say really wow. influenced you? Give me, give me, give me. Top four. Whoa! Top, yeah, no, no, top five. Top, I'll, give you one, I'll give you one more. Top, top five. five. Yeah, top All right. five. Jazz greats, trumpet. And do they kids. have to be in order? No, no, no. Yeah, because, okay. I mean, there is a number one. I'll tell you that. Yeah. There's <laughs> everyone else in between. <laughs> there is a number one. I think I know who you're There is a number about. one. There is a number one. But it's everything in between. Um, so I would say. Top five. It's quite difficult, but um, Clark Terry. I love Clark Terry. I love Clark Terry, man. Yeah. Clark Terry's in there. Kenny Dorham's in there. Okay. Woo! Top five. Yes. <laughs> <Three left. laughs> So, Clark Terry, Kenny Dora, and then... Miles Davis. Love Lisa Miles. Yeah. Love Lisa Miles. Um, oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> two left. For the peoples, for the peoples, two left. Well, uh, we know number, but there's number, there is a number one. We, we do know this. There's a number one. So I've said Clark Terry. I've can we sneak? Can we, can, can we get a sneak peek at who the number one is? Okay, okay. Number. I mean, I love Clifford Brown. Yeah. I love Clifford Brown. I think everybody knows that. But it's funny, I think I think when I was younger it was a lot more evident than now. Right, right, right. In my playing. Um, yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. Like I think if you heard me at 17, you'd be like, ah, oh, yeah, he listens to Clifford Brown every day. Right. Uh, which I did. Yeah. Um, but now I still listen to Clifford Brown. Uh-huh. But I don't think it's as evident in the way I play. I don't know. I don't know. But number one. My number one, Louis Armstrong, man. Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong. It blows my mind. So the older I get, the better it gets. Yeah. Ain't that something? True. Yeah. The older I get, the more I'm like, oh man. You know.
You heard this one? I mean, you, th you thought the trumpet playing was great, and then you start singing, and then you start singing. That's when it. Have you ever thought about singing? <laughs> let's listen to this song. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so anyway. <laughs> 